a few verses of scripture from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and share with you just for a few moments uh, a few thoughts from that passage of scripture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 beginning at verse 13 and reading down as far as verse 18 the end of the chapter. It says, Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive who are left unto the coming of the Lord will certainly not perceive those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. We pray God's blessing upon his word. We thank God for the promises that are found in the Word of God. And in these verses of Scripture that we just shared, there's, there's a promise of a future hope. There's a promise that death is not the end, but there is something beyond the grave. And the late evangelist D.L. Moody once made this statement. He said, one day you will hear that D.L. Moody is dead. But he said, don't believe a word of it, for on that day I will be more alive than I ever have been. And isn't that true for us? That's not what we believe, that one day when we die and we leave this earth, we will be more alive than, ever, than we have ever been. And so as we gather today, we do so to remember and to celebrate the lives of those who we love, who have passed on before us. And like I said earlier, we do give God thanks for the memory we have of sharing our time together. And I look forward to the day when I can meet my loved ones who have gone on before. My mom, my dad, my grandparents, my brother, and as my wife said, our two and a half day old granddaughter. That we had the privilege of seeing for just two and a half days, but I believe that one day we will see them all again. In this portion of scripture that we just read, the Thessalonians were wondering what was happening to those loved ones who had died. They, they had a fear that they would never see them again and that they would miss out on the return of Jesus Christ. And so Paul gives them these powerful words that we hear so often concerning the hope that we as Christians have. Paul said in verse 13 that he wanted them to know that those who have fallen asleep in Christ would rise again one day in victory over death, over hell, and the grave. And so I believe that what Paul is telling them and telling us today is that this hope we have is a confident hope. It's not just something that we, we think. We can be confident of the hope that we have that one day we will see our loved ones again. As Christians, of course, we are going to grieve the loss of our loved ones because there's the, the sense of loss and, and, and brokenness of fellowship that we once enjoyed with them. That's gone, it's taken from us. And Paul said, although we may feel sorrow, we, uh, feel sorrow, we don't feel sorrow as the world feels it. Because we believe that we will see our loved ones again in a land far greater than the one that we walk in now. And so it's normal for us to grieve when we lose a loved one. We must grieve, but we must also hope. And 1 Corinthians 15 and 19 says, If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. And so what Paul is saying, if this is the only thing that we have, that this life is the only thing that we have, then we are to be pitied more than all men. And so this is a confidence that you and I have to love God. 
And that is that one day we will see those who have passed on before. This is the hope that fills the heart of family for a departed loved one. The hope that you feel today for your loved one waiting on the hills of glory until we arrive there. The world cannot give this hope that we as Christians have. It only comes from knowing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We must know today that there is more to this life than what we can see with our physical eyes or touch with our hands or hear with our ears. There is an eternity, eternity that each of us needs to be prepared for and God has given us this life to get ready for either an endless heaven or an endless hell. In this world, I believe that as Christians, we can still have a, a confidence and assurance that God is in control, even though with all that's going on around us. But we need to remember that He is in control, and nothing happens to us that does not first pass through the hands of Almighty God. While things seem to be unstable all around us, and in places all over the world, Jesus Christ is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so not only do we have this confident hope, but we also have a continual hope. It's not just for today, it's for the future. 1 John 2 and 28 says, And now, dear children, continue in him, so that when he appears, we may be confident and unashamed before him at his coming. And so John was telling the church to continue in the Lord until his coming. Keep on serving God. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. Don't let anything hinder or distract you on your journey to heaven. Philippians 1 and 6 says, Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. The one thing that death does bring to every one of us is a realization of how mortal and how temporary our lives really are. <coughs> Today is the time, is the day that we need to make up our minds that we are going to continue in this blessed hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ while not allowing anything or anyone to keep us back from giving our all to him. This is a race that must be run to the end with endurance and effort and determination. And yes, even a little bit of blood, sweat, and tears at times. We may at times feel a bit battered and bruised and beaten by the storms of life. But my mind goes to a song that says, It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face all sorrows will erase, so bravely run away in grace until we see Christ. And so not only do we have a hope that is confident and a hope that is continual, but we have also have a hope that is comforting. Because Jesus said in John 14, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. My Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. As Christians, we don't really understand about all the glories that awaits us on the other side of death. But one thing we do know, our Master is there. And that, I believe, is enough. Paul tells the Thessalonians in verse 18 to stop worrying about your loved ones and comfort yourselves with these beautiful words. One day the mighty trumpet of God will sound and the dead will burst from their graves before you and I even get to leave the ground. And then we which are still alive 
and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with him. What a comfort. What a joy to know that that time is coming. This world cannot offer any answer that we can comfort, that can comfort the soul in a time like this when we think of our loved ones and if we think that we'll never see them again. Christians need to remember 2 Corinthians 5 and 8 when it says that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Victor Hugo once wrote, he said, when I go down to the grave, I can say, like so many others, I have finished my work, but I cannot say I have finished my life. My day's work will begin the next morning. My tomb was not a blind alley. It's a thoroughfare. It closes in the twilight to open in the dawn. The glory that awaits the Christian is truly a comforting thought. Paul said in Romans 8 and 18, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be re revealed in us. True comfort comes through knowing Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. One day we will all as individuals stand before Christ, before God our Creator, and we will give an account for what we have done with Jesus Christ while we live here on earth. We cannot have the comfort of Christianity until we know the Christ of Christianity. And so today, as we remember our loved ones, we believe that they are enjoying heaven, enjoying heaven with Jesus and all that comes with it. But for us left behind, we have a great hope, the hope of one day being united with family and friends gone on before. The hope of seeing our loved ones again. And that hope only comes by having a relationship with Jesus Christ, by accepting Him as Lord and Savior. And I will pray, if you're here today or within listening by media or whatever, social media, I would pray that you have not already done so, that you would accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So that you too could have that glorious hope of living throughout eternity with him. Many times as Christians I believe that we look at this place that we live, this earth, as home. But this is not home. This is only just a temporary dwelling place for us. Home is where we're meant to be. God created us as human beings to live this life and then to return to him. Home is where the heart is. Wherever our hearts are set, that's home. And I believe that God has put a, a home coming into each one of us that are urges to be with Him. And one day, if we are faithful to Him, I believe that we will all join together around the throne of heaven, around the throne of home. God, Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us. I'm going to change around the order of service a little bit. And I'm going to ask my wife to come. We're going to sing a vocal selection. And it, it's entitled Home. And it talks about what heaven is going to be like. And the, the loved ones that we will meet. We pray that God will bless you.